Welcome back to another edition of History in Your Own Backyard today. We are in Vernon, Indiana, here at the Jennings County Historical Society Museum. I am joined by Tom Rice, thank you very much, and Brad Bender. How are you guys? Fine. Awesome, awesome. So let's get into it. Uh, when, when was the um, Historical Society, the Jennings County Historical Society, formed? The parent organization was started in 1961 by Dalton Balzer, who was a local artist and craftsman, and he brought others into it. When they bought the building and turned it into the museum at the same time, and then moved forward with putting together a organization and volunteers. Very nice. So um, what, what has this building been used for in the past? It was originally a uh, stagecoach stop and tavern and hotel dating back to 1838. Tom, yes. the blacksmith shop, can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, the, the blacksmith shop that's there now is not an original building on this site. It was actually built after the organization of the Historical Society using lumber for, uh, from the Pennsylvania Railroad Depot here in Vernon. And uh, due to an increased interest in blacksmithing right now, our blacksmiths have just enlarged the shop so that to make a better uh, atmosphere for both them to work in and for the spectators to um, come and watch. Um, our, our blacksmith shop, we're very proud of it. It's a working blacksmith shop and the members maintain and operate it and they are members of the Indiana Blacksmiths Association. And this shop has been designated as a training facility for up and coming blacksmiths. The shop is open um, during our Sassafras uh, Civil War reenactment and tea festival in April, uh, during school tours, uh, and on other special events if we can get someone to operate it. It's also open 10 Saturdays throughout the year. All right, well, what about, you can, I'd love for you to be able to talk a little bit about the Victorian style here, what the history is with that. Uh, that little house is des has been designated by Southern Indiana Historic Landmarks Association as the smallest Victorian pattern house in the state of Indiana. It was located in North Vernon on College Street and was donated to the Historical Society in 2006. Uh, the state of it in 2006 was very bad. The roof had caved in, the floors were bad and everything, but it was the smallest Victorian house in the state, so we thought we'd take it. Um, it had been owned and used by a man named Eldo Hicks and his four sons who used it as an office to uh, design and engineer railroad bridges from mid-1880s through 1910. The house itself was ordered through a Sears and Roebuck catalog. At that time, you could order a home from Sears and Roebuck, one room, two rooms, three rooms, up to a two-story house. Um, it was shipped to North Vernon, set up on the builder's building site, and... Um, he used it uh, as an office for that time. The house was moved in 2007 down here to Vernon and set up on a site next, on a lot next to the museum here. And through volunteer help, uh, it was dedicated in 2009, and now it serves as an extension of the museum. Is the rumor true that once upon a time, this was the, the most high trafficked for, for trains? Third. Third. Third busiest railroad center in the state of Indiana in the late 1900s. 1800s, I'm sorry, in the late 1800s, I'm in a different century. Yeah, there was between 96 and 116 trains a day come through North Vernon. Wow, oh, I can see why this all makes sense, very much so. So, gentlemen, I understand that there are some really cool events that happen here throughout the year, so let's start with you. Come on, Brad. Our largest and longest running festival is the Sassafras Tea Festival and Civil War reenactment in April of every year, and it's been running for about 50 years already. And the biggest part of that, as the society goes, is we sponsor it and track everybody and invite the reenactors, set up the schedule. And the biggest thing is we fix pies all weekend and sell them. And we've gotten to the point now that there are so many, we sold 700 in two days last year, that we're taking them out the window and lowering them down because we can't get up and down stairs quick enough. What, what's the best flavor? What's the number one seller? Uh, it, every year it's different. All right. But we keep sassafras tea going, and you can look up sassafras tea on the internet and find out a little bit about it and how to dig a few roots and make a batch for yourself. But we start with hundreds of pounds of roots and process them and keep a kettle boiling all, year, all weekend long with free tea for people to sample. Ooh, that sounds delicious, completely delicious. All right, so uh, what, what can you tell us about some of the events that happen throughout the year here? 
Well, what I'm most involved with is our fall festival, our fall event, which is known as Hector's Haunted Evening uh, Ghost Walk and a Mystery Dinner. And that takes place here in Vernon, uh, Friday and Saturday evening. Uh, the Ghost Walk involves a walking guided tour of Vernon, leaves from this building and walks around the streets of Vernon, stopping periodically so that our guests can watch a skit. And the skit has to do with either a Halloween theme or some local folklore. And sometimes a ghost or a spirit may pop out at you and, and want to know what you're doing in their area <laughs> and everything. But it, it's a real popular event for everyone. And then uh, the mystery dinner is another story. It's a very delicious dinner served in our dining room. The dining room is decorated in a Halloween style, but serving the meal is not necessarily traditional. Um, Emily Post's rule of etiquette does not apply at this meal. Uh, because you're liable to get your food and no utensils to eat it with or something like that. Uh, but it, it is, it's a wonderful and fine. We uh, encourage all of our guests to interact with the ghosts and spirits that may show up that evening. Sounds mysterious. I'm a fan. 22 years we've been doing it. 22. Wow. All right. So, Tom, there are some pretty sweet things in this museum. I'm dying to know about the, the artifacts, specifically some of the, um, the Native American artifacts. Well, that's, yeah, that's one of our bigger collections. And uh, when the county was formed, there were several Native American tribes in this area. The Potawatomi, the Delaware, the Miami, and the Shawnee were the most prominent. Um, at that time... Uh, there were two large villages in the county, one on South Fork, just south of Vernon on the Muscatatuck River, and the other one was near um, Burrsville on Sand Creek. And the Native Americans and the settlers you know, coexisted peacefully most of the time. And um, there are a lot of Indian artifacts, or excuse me, Native American artifacts to be found in this county. And our biggest collection is, was donated by a man named Mr. Jim Haar, who was, was a retired school teacher, high school teacher from North Vernon. And um, since he was a young man, he's been looking through the fields and walking the riverbanks and finding these artifacts. And he told us when he donated them to us that even during class time in school, that some of his, when they were talking about this, some of his cl uh, students would invite him out to their family farms to walk the fields on their farms and everything. So he'd go out there on a weekend or something and look for things and he'd find them, they let him keep them. And now he's got to the point where he thinks that this collection needs to be preserved for future generations. So a couple of years ago, he donated it to us. And we have it here for the school, when we have school classrooms come in to look at them and, and see how the Native American had to exist back in the older days. And um, his collection includes uh, spear points, uh, hatchet heads, arrowheads, Alls, modern pedestals, scrapers, um, clay uh, pipe bowls, gaming stones, just a variety of different types of stone, mostly stone artifacts. Again, when Jennings County was formed and once the railroads were established, they played a very important role in our, in our daily lives. And in the beginning, when the first railroad tracks were laid in Jennings County, we used that railroad to export uh, timber, uh, sawed lumber, and cut limestone out of the county to various parts of the, st of the state and, and the country. And um, the first railroad laid it down tracks in Jennings County was the, uh, in 1832, was the um, Madison, Annapolis, and Lafayette Railroad. It was later changed just the Madison, Annapolis Railroad. And um, a few years later, uh, an east-west railroad crossed, them, crossed the uh, Madison, Annapolis Railroad in uh, north of here, two miles north of here, and at that crossing is where the town of North Vernon sprang up, and that still exists today. Um, many people from Jennings County worked for the railroad over the years. And as I said earlier, it was very popular uh, tourist. We had tracks in and out of North Vernon, six different directions, between 96 and 116 trains a day. And of those people that worked for the railroad, one man in particular um, named Mr. Bob Clark, he worked for the B&O for over 50 or 40 years, I'm sorry. And um, he was interested in history, and during his time, he gathered memorabilia, uh, tr uh, train orders, uh, documents, um, and mostly pictures. He had over 1,000 pictures that he donated to us. Uh, he also donated part of his collection to the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad Museum in Baltimore. And um, of these pictures, he, these pictures include pictures of uh, depots in Jennings County, 
and many of the surrounding counties, pictures of other railroad buildings, uh, different types of steam engines, uh, rolling stock, uh, tragedies, accidents, wrecks, the major floods like in 37 and, and prior to that. And it's very interesting. And so we're very proud of our railroad heritage and we're proud to have this exhibit. I know there are several stories, interesting stories that you could share with us, but I'm gonna ask you to pick one and do tell please. Well, we have another display that we're very proud of uh, in the museum, and that is a, an authentic 1925 wooden horse-drawn mail wagon that was used in Jennings County to deliver mail in the 1920s and 30s. Uh, this wagon was donated in 2012 by Miss Joyce Strubin. It belonged to her father-in-law, Fred Strubin, and uh, he worked for the U.S. Postal Service from the mid-1920s to 1942, around 1942. And uh, he had a route that ran from Nebraska, Indiana, to Butlerville, Indiana, to Zenith, Indiana, and back to Nebraska. The route was 32 miles in length, and it was all done in a horse-drawn carriage. And he kept an extra horse near Zenith on a farm so he could switch the horses out about halfway through his route. He delivered mail on Christmas Day, uh, and he, he told us all about, or she told us all about how he dressed for the winter and how he kept his buggy warm with the heaters. And, um, and it's very interesting to have something authentic like that. And it's on display in the back room of the building. He was a genius to have a, a horse waiting for him to <laughs> switch it out. I mean, absolutely. miles is a long way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a long way in a car. Yeah. <laughs> Brad, can you tell us about the home and garden tour? We've been sponsoring a home and garden tour in Jennings County for over 20 years and uh, using many of the historic homes and it started out as purely a garden tour and then expanded to where people were doing it inside their homes and opening up some that were built in the early 1800s. This year it became even more unique in that we opened it up as a barn tour with historic barns with assistance from one of our board members, uh, Louise Malcolm, who worked very hard with it, and the Indiana Barn Foundation that helped sponsor it. And it was a big hit and something that we're going to look forward to doing again. Thank you for watching another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. I'm Susie. Today we were in Vernon, Indiana at the Jennings County Historical Society Museum. Remember, travel, travel slowly and stop, stop often. often. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.